Well, let's talk about Dynamite. Okay, Mike? It's fine. All right, well, it started with uh, Keith Lee and Darby are backstage. And Darby gives Keith a speech about how you used to be dominant, but uh, now you've been lost in the shuffle. So why don't you do something about it, dude? Why don't you get up there and get your head out of your ass? Or your behind, Dom. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And even if you have to win two-on-one, do it. Don't sit on the apron and cry about it. I think I might have written this for Darby. But Keith laughed and said, well, that was stupid, but it was ballsy. And so uh, they had Swerve and Keith Lee versus Darby and Orange Cassidy. I love this match with all my heart. I love this better than the Wheeler Yuta versus Kenny Omega main event. It was so great because there's nothing better. Like, you know, everyone kind of marks out when Keith Lee does like, you know, he dives over the ropes or whatever. I like when Keith Lee grabs a man and doesn't budge. Like, you leap off the top rope, and you just kind of hit him, and he just stands there and grabs you and then does some gigantic, horrifying move. And he had two little men to do this stuff with, and it was freaking great. And Swerve accidentally hit Keith Lee a couple of times, and then uh, second time Orange hit the diving DDT, Tope into a DDT on Keith outside, Darby pinned Swerve with the Last Supper, 11 minutes of pure, unadulterated awesomeness. Loved it! And then Keith fist bumped the baby faces afterwards. Because you know what? Darby was right. I don't want a team with Swerve. Who cares about this tournament? I don't need a team with this geek. I can't even get a singles match with him. But Darby lit a fire under him. And this was, I would say this was the very best Keith Lee performance in his entire AEW run. He was great. Then, yes, we had the Nick Wayne video package. There at the Buddy Wayne Academy in Everett. Pictures of Buddy and and Nick when he was a little kid. And Darby's there telling the story of when Buddy passed away. And, and he decided he was going to do anything he could to give Nick a great life. And then he called Tony and he said, Hey, listen, you ever seen this Nick Wayne? I don't want to hire him because he's my, he's my friend. I want you to hire him because he's great. And uh, for those of you that haven't seen Nick Wayne, dude's great. And uh, I don't know if there's ever been a kid that is as good at age 16 as Nick Wayne. And I'm not even exaggerating. And Dave even agreed. That's Dave Meltzer. You know how many kids he's seen wrestling at 16 in Mexico and Japan and everywhere else? Nick's awesome. So he debuts next week against Swerve. Jungle Boy five, promo. Well, uh, let me just say five five tool player i mean absolutely and you know there there's a you can count them on few hands especially when you take mexico out of the equation how good people are at this young of an age but i I worry about something when's the last time that swerve has won a match i mean he's got to get tired about losing over and over and over again i'm just i'm just saying well we'll see what happens next week Jungle Boy gets out of his car and says he's going to go to Tony Khan's office and demand an FTW title shot. Hook attacks him, and he gets out of there as quickly as you've ever seen someone get out of there in a car. And we never see him again. We had a bunch of segments with MJF and Adam Cole. I'll go into full detail on these on the Brian and Vinny show tonight because there's a lot to say. But uh, let's cut to the chase. They are absolutely fantastic. And you know where we are? You know where we are again? We're right back to the same place where I watch these and I go, why didn't he go top babyface? He's not even being a full babyface. He's totally a heel. Man, you wonder why Cole's not a heel too also watching this. This right over. These fans absolutely love MJF when he plays babyface. And uh, and God, yeah. he was so great during this show. And, and Adam Cole is let absolutely fantastic playing off of him. Let it go. Let and they're uh, I'm never gonna let it go. Yeah, never. You should. And uh, they're they're uh, they're kind of becoming buddies. And Roderick right. Strong is not Mm-mm. not happy about this. We had the Blade and the Bollywood Boys versus the acclaimed and Daddy Ass, which. Uh, Dom, I can't say his name. His name is Daddy Ass. It's just I we only, actually someone on the uh, show. What do they call him? Papa Butt. There was a sign last night. Papa Butt. I guess I could call him that. Senor Scissor. I don't know. But they won quickly, and then old Harley, who is not Harlan from NXT, but might be a harlot. We don't know. She appeared, and and she's got a music video oh. next week. 
uh, to show Brian, what a great singer she is. Apparently, she used to team with Mariah May, who is now blowing it up there in stardom. I can I can imagine what that team what must have been like. It really. You know how much money Mariah May is going to make one of these days when WWE and AEW decide they're going to have a bidding war over her? Lone Video package of old Eddie Kingston winning the New Japan Strong Openweight title, and then Moxie did a promo. And uh, you guys know the story. Moxley and Eddie love each other, but they hate each other for what they're doing right now. And they want to get on the same page, but they're both... Actually, Eddie's a really stubborn one in this storyline here. Yeah, well... Blind Eliminator draw, Matt Hardy, his partner... You hate people who can't let something go, Brian? His partner will be... Who's the one who won't let it go now, brother? I'm moving on! So anyway, Matt Hardy's partner is going to be Jeff. And he goes, my brother, thank God. And then he's told, it's Jeff Jarrett. And Matt mutters, I hate Jeff Jarrett. Oh, God, that was a perfect time for RJ to go. That's J E double F. Oh, never mind. Jericho came out for a promo, and uh, he wants to reinvent himself again. Now that he's driven around Canada and seen all his old haunts. So he's burned everybody out. And out comes Don Callis. Ugh. God, this guy. What a heat magnet this guy is. Mm. And uh, he takes all the credit for Jericho. Jericho takes all the credit for him. And they both agree, well, golly. Actually, it's just Don. Don's lines. I love Don because, like, he's so good at being... Uh, himself well yeah like you 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 he he feels very real and organic but the things that he says and i don't know how he pulls this off i almost said a bad word right there he goes you know jericho's uh talking about how if it wasn't for him don wouldn't even be here don goes we're in agreement i agree that when we get together we make history <laughs> but as you know I recently was betrayed by a cowardly punk named Kenny Omega. So I have to build a new family, and my new family will be built on trust. And when I think of trust, I think of the greatest of all time, the man who beat Kenny Omega in AEW, and my best friend of 34 years, Chris Jericho. So if you're ready to change history one more time... I am here to formally ask you just one question. Will you join the Don Callis family? Nobody else on the planet could just pull off this verbiage in this way. But people are just booing like crazy. And Jericho says, brother, I don't join factions. I create them. But, you know, if you're seriously asking me to join up with you, I got one word for you. Everybody's expecting him to say no or yes, actually. But he says maybe and the fans are like what and off he goes see i'm punk promo about the joe match on saturday you know and again i love how everybody thinks that i hate cm punk and all i want is for them to do this right with cm punk and when i saw them doing a 30 second video package for punk and joe on collision i was aghast they have so much ring of honor footage they have all of their matches, all of their Ring of Honor angles, everything. And I think there was one brief, like, dissolution or whatever when the screen did, I just about broke everything here. And that was it. So, I command. If I had the right to command, I command they do my idea. And they have Joe beat him. And they build up to that match at Wembley. And then they have like a like a one-hour special on WBD building up this final climactic 75,000 fans there to see Joe versus Punk for the last time. We'll see what happens. Well, you know what? Moxley and Kingston had a better video package than Punk and Joe did with the historical exactly. footage. Exactly, exactly. So then Roderick Strong was being checked out by Doc Sampson. He's not cleared yet. And, uh... He's in a neck brace, uncleared. And he goes, I feel great. I feel great, yeah. Which is actually funny, by the way, because uh, you remember when Matt Jackson tore his biceps and he had that big old thing on his arm? He also felt great. He wasn't in any pain or anything. He thought he could go, and they didn't let him. But anyway, Adam said, listen, I, I got this under control, Roddy. Don't worry about it. Just, care just worry about yourself. And as he walks away, Roderick just 
he doesn't know what to make of this, and he's yeah. not happy. He is just a guy right now. CM Punk basically called him just a guy throughout that whole match. Now he's just a guy watching his friends. He's going to be just a heel is what he's going to be. Oh. MGF and Cole versus The Butcher and Daddy Magic. And uh, I hope he takes Marina's line if you don't know him. This was great. Just a great duo. Fans are just going crazy for these guys. MGF working heel babyface or babyface heel, whichever you want to call it. <laughs> and so uh, I don't know what they're going to do. But, like, if you watch this very, very clearly, like, MGF is building up to some spot in a future match where they go for a double clothesline. And I don't know what's going to go wrong, but it's going to be awesome when it happens. So they win. And then MJF does this big, long deal. You know, I mentioned this was straight out of WWE, and, you know, people in the, on the forum were like, what is that even? What? I didn't oh, say it was bad, God. dude. I didn't say it was bad. I just said this is what they do. Bro, they, they sang happy birthday to the guy. They had blokes bring out cake. A guy's face ended up in a cake. I've seen this in WWE a thousand times. I didn't say it was bad. I loved it. And so Wrestling afterwards, brother. afterwards, he uh, gets the cake in his face. After Max tries to put Cole's face in, Cole's reverses it. Fans chant, eat the cake. So Mox, or Maxley, uh, Max, who is not Mox or Maxley, he eats the cake. Fans pop. Tatum Paxley! And the big thing at the end is is Cole just says, you know, Max, in all sincerity, I just want to tell you that it was really nice of you to do all this for my birthday. So thank you, my friend. And he leaves. So they're teasing that, man, are these guys, like, going to be on the same page and friends? Red Baker promo. We had Jericho with Sammy and Daniel. They're upset that he said maybe to Don Callis, but they end up being put together in the blind eliminator, so Jericho goes and tells him to do what you want to do. Britt Baker, Ruby Soho, Owen Hart Cup. You'll never guess they beat Britt again. Uh, without, you know, this was this is evil in the Bullet Club, dude. It's like interference, 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 interference right in front of the referee. Interference. Pinfall. So uh, Ruby's moving on. And uh, I'll, I'll talk about this more tonight on the Brian and Minnie show. Because I got a lot to say about these uh, these folks on Twitter. Uh, Kenny Omega and Wheeler Yuta was the main event. And uh, Kenny came in with his neck taped up and his shoulder taped up. Selling the, uh, the tiger driver that almost killed him. Taped your neck. And uh, he taped his neck. It was from the base of his skull to the top of his shoulders. Which is your neck. I know. The, the, look, I'm sorry. The tape and the cupping and all that. Yeah, hey, he did all of that. I, you don't think that guy needs cupping? Well, he does. And so they do the match. And, man, he gave everything to old Wheeler. He sold and sold and sold and sold. And Wheeler looked great. But finally, old Wheeler goes up top. Kenny sneaks under, grabs him, one wing angel, pins him. And uh, afterwards, it's the big, the big brawl. Takesh and Claudio, they attack Omega. Young Bucks and Hangman come down. They kill Claudio with the BT trigger. Hangman goes to waffle him with a chair. Dark Order shows up. They yank the chair out of Hangman's hand, and the show goes off the air. And uh, for those of you wondering, that was exactly when the show was supposed to go off the air. It came across on TV as rushed, like they, they went off the air early. But uh, they didn't. That's exactly when it's supposed to go off the air. It was rushed, but they got to where they wanted to go before the show ended. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.